Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is uh, Diego Sanchez, Xdabs. You can find me on Instagram under the name Xdabs or on Facebook, Xdabs. Uh, today we're going to be doing a demo on color tube pulling. I've seen a lot of people ask questions about this, and uh, it's an interesting subject, so I think we're going to be able to do something kind of cool. I prepped up a little bit before this so I can explain everything that's going on. Here we have 32 millimeter round by four connected onto a 16 mil. It's going to be our outside. Then on our inside, we're using a 16 mil, I think a 16 by two, 2.8 I believe, um, connected onto a punty with a round bottom. Basically what this is going to do, this is going to go inside of here, just like this. That's there to kind of like guide us in place, make sure we don't jump around. Um, our color is going to go around, and then the inside is going to be our tube, and this is where we're going to pull from the other side. So right now we need to do some prep. Um, once you have your blank pulled, you're going to want to see how long you have and how much space you have. Then you do a measurement, and then that's how you figure out how much color you're going to need, which on mine was 85 millimeters long. Um, start off a little shorter or a little longer, the more how you feel comfortable. Everything should be cleaned off with Windex or alcohol. Make sure there's no residues left on any glass, uh, clear glass especially. Use some Windex. Want to clean up that 16 mil right here. Once you hear that thing start squeaking, that means it's clean. There's no oils left on there. The reason we're doing this is um, oils will trap bubbles. So we have our 32 millimeter. Clean the outside of it real good. Um, you could also clean the inside, which is semi-smart. Sometimes your tubes get a little dirty. Stick it in. Grab a pair of tweezers. Give a quick spin up and down, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Everything should be even inside. If you see any little like the hairs, blow those out once it dries out. It's a good thing with a paper towel, just everything kind of comes away. Um, I had already pre-prepped all my color. Um, we're going to work with black to rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple or indigo, violet. Then we'll wrap that other up with black. That's our pattern for today. Um, as we start going in, I'm going to start sticking these in. I'm going to put this here in a, in a way that hopefully the camera can see what I'm doing. Um, everything that goes inside we're going to want to clean the same way. I spray a little bit here, leave this side dry because we're going to keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, I'm going to start separating my pattern. Let's get rid of all the blacks because I like to start from wherever my important pattern is or wherever you are as long as you don't lose your pattern. If you look at your pattern, here's my middle. These two are going to be my middle. And it'll be these next ones and then the next ones. So that's the order we're going to put them in. So that's why I like to separate, put everything in an order that I know. Okay, this goes, then that goes, and these go. Clean these off. Clean side, dry side. Put it in. Wet side. Oops. Wet side. Dry side. As you're doing this, you're going to use the wet side. I spin the glass to make sure I'm covering every single edge. Okay. 
hate to do it, it's a little repetitive, but it's for demo purposes. It's kind of uh, took a lot of time out already for doing the, most of the prep. So this is kind of like the real important parts from what they've shown me, where I've seen other people do this. Once you have enough glass in there that you're already starting to build up those walls, that's when we're going to bring in this clear. Gently put that in there. We don't want to put it in all the way, just want to give it enough so it will maintain the wall thicknesses as we start inputting in the rest of our color. So same way, kept doing that. Clean, wet, dry them up, put it on in. These are going to be our last colors because this is the black. It's going to be our backing for this. Comes out with a real nice rainbow pattern. We need one more. What I did is I replaced it. I noticed I had still had a little bit of play. So I just grabbed a tiny bit thicker rod of black to make sure I filled in that little gap. It's all the same manufacturers, just since some rods are a little bit thicker, some are thinner. Once you get everything in, make sure everything is nice and plumb. And there's our stack. Rainbow stack. So we'll put this in the kiln about 15 minutes. And then we'll come back and melt all this in together. We'll be right back. Alright, it's been about 15 minutes. Everything's been in the kiln. Coming up to temperature. Before we do that, I want to make sure our flames are set in a nice manner. Clean off any kiln dust. Make sure all our colors are equally in there, which they seem to be. And we start melting in our outside. That inside tube I made there, I made there a tad bit too long. So I'm trying to focus the heat more on this inner wall here. trying to do now is melt in the fat lip into the inside and then we'll get this inside one here and we'll push it out a little bit help it out here since it was so big
I'm doing is I'm trying to get this clear here to meet that other clear on the inside without trapping any air. All that air, we want to pull it up this way. around here um, when you start sucking in you want to take a deep breath make sure you don't suck any of these gases in <sighs> only suck in with your mouth like, a, like you know like a vacuum We're going to heat this up section by section, start pulling little by little. First, we want to make sure we have no air trapped on these outsides. stuck there. I'm going to attach our other handle. This is another 16 mil. sure your handle's centered. This is now your master side to whatever we're going to start pulling. Whatever we're left with. Okay. Start heating up the next section. as I heat up the majority of the area and then come in with a real precise flame to where I want to really start working into you'll see where the air meets the trapped glass and you always want to work a little bit either behind it or a little in front of it a little behind it a little in front of it once you see it starts moving in your hands a little bit warm it up real nice that's what we're going to to another vacuum again. <sighs> Since we've heated up that nice area, we're going to work on the knuckle a little bit here. This is the outside. Stretch some of that glass down. If you 
you see yourself getting out of alignment, spin the other way. Kind of helps you come back into an alignment again. When you're ready to see your next part of your glass, the same thing again, one more time. Just back you. Last part right here. Last part's a little tricky. You want to make sure you trap all this clear around it. So you can use every little bit of color. Then we'll come back. Once that's all that's trapped, we'll pull down this whole knuckle and get another nice chunk of glass. Two can pull down. one more time. See if you guys can see what I'm doing here in the smaller window. Letting gravity do most of the work. On the other side, you see me doing some of this. I'm blowing a little air just to make sure that we keep that wall thickness even. Nice two pull. We don't want to let this thing get too cold on us, and we will get a crack. Let's just chop this piece off here. We have a V-necking tool. The V neck itself. It's a great time to use that part. Just trying to take advantage of every little bit of tubing I can. Give it a quick little score. Wait for it to cool a little tiny bit. And there you go. Snapped. We got our rainbow tubing. Got a little bit of a split here because we let it cool too much. What we'll do is we'll put that in the kiln. We'll toss it right in the little knuckle. Thank you very much. And that was how to do a vac stack without a vacuum. Enjoy yourself.